How many butterbeers, more Halloween Horror Nights, and more on episode 323 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Hey everybody and welcome to episode 323. I'm your host today, Darren, and joining me, Chris. Adley Ho. <laughs> Tracy. Hello everyone. And Lee. Hello, Ron. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Good. Welcome back. Good. Yes. yes, welcome back. This is what the first time in eight weeks, I believe, we've got the whole crew back together. Wow. <laughs> and only for a couple weeks. Yeah. Tracy, you're up next. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can, yeah, I can arrange that. You haven't missed that many, though, have you? Yeah. No. Actually, it's me again, because I have been called upon to serve my community and oh, jurist yeah. duty. Good luck. I remember doing yeah. that many years ago. Is it is it on the Stephen Avery case? <laughs> I can't yeah, see. That would be kind of out of our jurisdiction. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're just flying and stuff there. They're like, shh, don't tell anybody. They're not allowed to discuss anything. I know. That. Who isn't? Darren isn't. He Jurors. Know. Not allowed to discuss it. Well, I'm not a jury. Juror yet. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And Very actually, good. all the speculation might get me out of it. So, hey, let's talk about it some more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's not guilty. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like Whoever it is, definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go on to uh, <laughs> an interesting, uh, monumental feat, I would say, by from Universal. Universal has sold their twenty millionth butter beer. Ooh. Ooh. I thought that would have happened a long time ago. To be honest, yeah, I did actually. <laughs> now, is this just regular butter beer or all the butter beer types? Combined, I don't know. Um, because you would have thought if it was combined, that would have ha- definitely happened earlier. I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. But then again, it's, twenty it's, millions, bit of a big number. That is true. That's a lot of sugar. Yeah. Can you imagine, <laughs> Darren? How many of you accounted million. for? A lot of. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I would say probably a one point four percent the total number. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say one point four million. Yeah. Though lately I don't know, the last couple of times I haven't I haven't gotten one. I just haven't mm. had the taste for it. I'm just I think I might there. have burnt out on it. A Maybe. Bit. <laughs> I don't even think I'm in double figures on it. Hmm. It doesn't actually say I'm just on the blog. It doesn't mm. actually say yeah, it just says that uh, October 18th, Universal Land Resort that twenty m- announced that 20 million butterbeers have been sold in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Well, regardless, it says, it's a big number. And that's yeah. from 2010, mm-hmm. so just eight years from when guests took their first sips of butterbeer when the Wizarding World first opened. You have to remember, yeah, that 20 million doesn't sound like a lot, but then you remember you can only get it at one place. True. Mm-hmm. Two now, but... And then, well, kind of three, but we won't talk about that, right, Lee and Tracy? Yeah, it's rank. Mm, yeah. <laughs> How much is a butterbeer nowadays? About $8. Yep. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, last time it was like 40 bucks or something. It's like $160 million on butterbeer alone. Wow. It's not because it was less than that when it first came yeah, out. So but it's yeah, somewhere in the middle like of that. 299 or 399 Yeah. So you're probably looking at around one twenty, a hundred and twenty million dollars on butterbeer sales alone. Wow! Holy yeah. crap! That's unbelievable. And how much did they reckon? So didn't they reckon it was two hundred and fifty million for for how much Hogsmeade cost? So they've paid for half of that land just in <laughs> selling drinks <laughs> in eight years. Wow! I can guarantee the other half in wands and everything <laughs> yeah. else, oh, yeah. and then some. Yeah, the wands have to be in billions by now. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine, yeah. Well, they're, what, 30 odd dollars a piece? So, yeah. I still haven't got one. Next year. Oh, and uh, cloaks, too. I mean, mm-hmm. the, those are, but that's like 100 bucks, right? Each one? Yeah. And you see, how many people do you see even in the middle of summer running uh, around with those ones? Yeah. Maybe I won't get one of those next year then. A cloak? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about a cloak and a wand. When would you wear it, though? That's the thing. When I'm doing the washing up. Probably. But I'm flicking me a wand at the All dishes, the wondering Lee. why they're not cleaning the themselves. Time. I will. <laughs> Just walk down the street and it went yeah, I will. Oh, don't, because I'm not in the village. It's a bit odd. <laughs> not I'd that. walk the dog. It's just a good job Jade's not at uh, junior school anymore. You'd be walking at a school in it. 
I would. Oh, I, used, yeah. I used to take her to school with rats up my sleeves. So what's the point? <laughs> yeah. What they need is the invisibility cloak. I'd buy like 10 of those. Yeah. Why would you need yeah. 10, Chris? You oh, need one. <laughs> I live in different places. I'm very forgetful. <laughs> Fair okay. enough. Chris rolls with a big crew. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to pull off any major heist with just one. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get around. I got to cover the car. Everything, you know? Yeah. You don't have to be forgetful with the invisibility. I can't speak invisibility cloak. You put it in the wrong place and turn around and you can't put your hands in it again because you can't see it. <laughs> see, that <laughs> always gets me. <laughs> How does that work? Like, because if you turn it the wrong way around, you're never going to find it again. Yeah, you just have to know where you left it. Sure. <laughs> what you do then is you get a cat because cats will always curl up on piles of fabric. Ah, that's a good point. Yeah, you just see it floating and hovering around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, it, oh, it crawls <laughs> underneath and you never see the cat again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So. Oh, it'd be easy to hide the Christmas presents, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. You could just have them hidden in plain sight. And then forget that they're there yourself. Oh, then trip I over. Wouldn't would they trip over? Indeed. <laughs> Sorry. Gone off. Yes, 20 million butterbees, by the way. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. From butterbees <laughs> to cats. <laughs> yep. But it's crazy, though, when you think about it, like, like we've said there, probably $120 million just in butterbees alone, and then you've got everything else, the, all the... the um, Pumpkin juice and well, they must have taken about 100 bucks in pumpkin juice the by now. Pumpkin oh, yeah. fizz, <laughs> so and it. then <laughs> the wizard's brew and the dragon scale, and plus, like all the merch that they must the wizarding world has made Universal Orlando an absolute oh, fortune without a doubt. Yeah, but it's amazing. Ice cream too yeah, yeah, I was say, yeah, it's yeah, that f- Florian Fortescue is always busy. Mm-hmm. It's a very good ice cream. And of course, to recap, there is only one kind of butterbeer that's good, and that's frozen. Hot. Oh, and Pumpkin juice. Sorry, you spelt that wrong, Darren. <laughs> it's H-O-T. Uh, Ice cream. Uh, oh. Hot butterbeer is on sale again, too, by the way. Oh, it's in, oh, yes. it's in oh. Seth's little things. I heard oh. that. Well, but yeah. Well, we'll hear from Seth. We'll really <laughs> sorry, Seth. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's good enough to repeat twice, because hot butterbeer is the Tastes like cardboard. Yes. Yeah, I just read about that, so I'm sure you were very happy from over there, and you're just well, smelling not, it coming over the pond. Yeah. <laughs> you can smell it coming over the <laughs> in the winds, right? The, it probably, the yeah. Winds. My issue yeah. is thinking about when we're looking to come over next year, oh. hot butter beer will probably not be available when we are there. I will not yeah. be amused. I demand... Right, well, what you do is you buy a, a butter beer on your way out to the park. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. Go back to the hotel. Mm-mm. And oh, you don't That's have microwaves. And just it's not the same. Well, it's not put the it same. through the Q-Rig. No. Well, what you want to do is uh, partner up with Al Gore and stop global warming. And then maybe it'll be yeah. cool enough in October. <laughs> and then we can uh, have some nice hot butter yes. beer then. Actually, what he wants to do is realize that hot butter beer is rank and stop going on about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. really half the flavors the cup. I'm just saying. Look, you're on it's alcohol like... next time, so you won't even be bothered about butter beer. I will, because I'll exactly. want a shot of fire whiskey to... in my hot butter yeah, beer. I was, was going to say, <laughs> that's like you're going to taste whiskey. <clears throat> I can't believe we just talked as long as we have about selling how many butter beers. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> yes. sometimes that happens. 20 million. Woo-hoo. Yay! Congratulations. All the diabetes. Okay. Yes. Moving on. <laughs> we, let's let's go on to that little things from Seth. Hey everyone, this is Seth Kaberski, and I am back with a huge edition of all the little things that are new around the Universal Orlando Resort. Let's start right at the resort entrance, where as of Saturday, October twentieth, parking prices have increased. The new rates are twenty five dollars for regular self parking in Universal's parking garages. That's up $3, $30 for recreational vehicles and buses, $40 for prime parking, $50 for a full day of valet, save $5 if you show up after 6 p.m., and $60 for red carpet valet. One good thing, the discounted and free rates for annual pass holders have remained the same, and the Lowe's hotels have not raised their parking prices yet. Look for that to happen at the beginning of next year. Okay, on our way into the theme parks, we're going to swing by Voodoo Donuts. Now, I mentioned a while back that if you want to order a dozen donuts, you can call them in ahead of time and skip the line. 
But here's another thing you might not know. There is a dedicated cash register in there only for buying Friars Flyers. That is a specialty pack of a dozen pre-chosen fried donuts. And if that's what you are going to order, you can skip the line entirely without calling in and just go in and pick up one of those at the far left cash register. That register should be open, but it might not always be available, so ask outside before you jump in the line. As we head inside the parks, be aware that early park admission will move from Universal Studios Florida to Islands of Adventure only as of November 4th. In addition, on October 23rd, only Despicable Me and Rip Ride Rocket will be open for early park admission, not Escape from Gringotts. In other Wizarding World news, Hot Butterbeer is back. As of this weekend, the seasonal warm butterbeer is again being served inside both Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade. Last year, the Hot Butterbeer stuck around through the early spring. Uh, It's Probably my favorite version, especially if you slip in a shot of fire whiskey. So (laughs) be sure to get your cup of hot butter beer while you can. Shops inside the Wizarding World have also started selling Fantastic Beasts merchandise, including Fantastic Beasts character wands. Unfortunately, these new wands are non-interactive and do not work with the windows around the Wizarding World. And speaking of windows, there's some new signage in the windows of what will soon be Globus Mundi, the travel agency-themed shop inside Diagon Alley. There have been some clever advertisements pasted over the windows of the upcoming shop that give a taste of what's in store. Moving outside the Wizarding Worlds, we've got word of some refurbishments around the parks. Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster over in Kid Zone recently returned from refurbishment. Parts of the track got a fresh coat of paint and some touch-up work has been done around the queue. No huge changes, but also an indication that the attraction may be sticking around for at least a little while longer. Likewise, over in Marvel Superhero Island, one of the towers on Doctor Doom's Fearfall has received new ride vehicle restraints which do away with the old seatbelt style restraint that went between riders' legs. The new restraints seem to just be in testing for now, but should eventually be added to the other tower as well. There's a good news, bad news situation over in Seuss Landing. The good news is some great merchandise for the upcoming Grinch movie is starting to show up on store shelves in the park. The bad news is that Honk Honkers, the custom cotton candy shop, has closed its doors. I'm hearing that this is a temporary closure and that they may hopefully be rearranging the interior for some better guest flow. If you're feeling hungry, the mobile express ordering system that I recently mentioned has now also spread to Mel's Drive-In at Universal Studios Florida, as well as Cafe 4 inside Islands of Adventure. I used it the other day to get some onion rings at Mel's, and even though the line for cashiers was all the way out to the door, I got my food in less than 90 seconds. Wow. And finally, stop by Williams Prop Shop in Universal Studios, Florida. If you are a fan of the Bone Chillin' drink stand, the last I was in there, they had a marquee sign from the stand available for sale, and it's only missing a couple of letters. All right, that's all for now. This is Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides, Touring Plans, Orlando Weekly, and Attractions Magazine. I'll see you again soon with another look at all the little things that are new around the Universal Orlando Resort. Plenty going on. Yeah, so it yeah. finally happened. Uh, it only took 28 years, but now the price of parking has equaled the price of admission when Universal opened. Oh, really? Yes, $25 is the original cost for a ticket to Universal Studios. Wow. Wow. I wonder what that is with like inflation. It was crazy. Right. Again, you think how many cars oh, sort of going back to how much they've made off Butterbeer in the last eight years, how much they're making off parking on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. For people, you know, it, it doesn't really cost them anything. They're paying exactly. however many team members just to wave you into the parking spaces. It's not that. The cost of that is minimal. Yeah. 
It is a bit of a <laughs> take, really. <sighs> it's one of them things as as people coming from over here, you just you just put it down to part of the money that you spend, but it's crazy. You know, in the course of a fortnight's holiday, we can spend over three hundred dollars on parking, yeah, which I'm is just dumping your car basically. Crazy. Yeah. I think somebody said they matched the prices of Disney now. Mm, I saw Disney put theirs up was it last week. Aren't they charging? Aren't they getting ready to start charging at hotels Disney as well? Yeah. Mm. Oh. It's all about yeah. nickel and diming. Yeah. Yep. That's mm. how we go. But yeah. Um, I didn't even get to try that cotton candy place. I hope it does open back up. Yeah, me no, too. No, yeah. That is temporary. Yeah. I doubt they're closing it because it's always packed. Yeah, that's yeah. It's got to be something other than the fact that no one's going in. Well, he said yeah. it, 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 it thinks the flow, the flow, yeah, to rearrange it for better flow. Yeah, because I've seen. I think Kenneth posted a video on our YouTube channel when it first opened. It doesn't look like a massive place. No, no, it's actually pretty small. So if it is mega popular, then yeah, I suppose I don't think they expected it to be as popular as it is. Yeah, it's hard to find uh, sugar in the parks. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even like candy floss, do you? Yeah. It's popcorn I don't like. I don't think I've ever seen you eat it. Well, it's not, some, we don't, it's not like it's something that's available everywhere that we go. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you don't just make it at home. Come on, Tracy. <laughs> no, I'm slacking there. <laughs> yeah, you just get the whole fan out and just, you know, do the home method. Yeah. Breakfast oh. ready, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jade would love it for breakfast. Yeah, she would. They really missed out not doing a killer clown one, like a themed one. Yeah, oh, I know. Like a, I don't know, like a lollipop, like person inside, <laughs> and then just like a gummy bear face. Yeah, outside. yeah, that yeah. Great. I think they just um, went all in for Stranger Things themed food this year, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Which you can't blame them, I suppose. That's true. All right, well, let's head over to our party correspondent, Chris, <laughs> for New Year's Eve at Universal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, New Year's Eve. Well, Universal Orlando have announced this year's New Year's celebration. Eve at Universal City Walk is a separately ticketed event that includes an unlimited selection of gourmet dishes, access to six City Walk clubs with live bands and DJs, featuring DJ M Squared. On Ooh. Orlando's lar- DJ M Squared. Did, you guys don't know about this guy? No. Oh, yeah, man. He's the squared the version of M. DJ <laughs> Plus a champagne toast at midnight underneath a magnificent display of confetti bursts and pyrotechnics and is for guests 21 and up. Eve tickets are now on sale and start at the low, low cost of $109.99. And specials off, special offers include $30 off tickets purchased before December 15th, plus a special discount for annual pass holders. VIP ticket packages are also available and include two complimentary drinks, awesome, additional premium food options, and a private viewing area for the pyrotechnic display. For tickets and event details, visit citywalk.com forward slash Eve. Note how it doesn't tell you how much those VIP ticket packages yeah. are. Yeah, just a marginal, not more. Uh, guests can also ring in the new year at Universal Studios Florida, where the Music Plaza stage and Central Park areas will transform into party zones featuring live music, appearances by beloved Universal Orlando characters, and essential party favors. Festivities uh-huh. continue as the new Lagoon Show, Universal Orlando's cinematic celebration, caps off a full day in the parks and pyrotechnic displays blast off at midnight to mark the start of a new year and best of all, this Universal Studios Florida event is included with your normal park admission. I've never heard anybody say party favors and just mean party favors. What's an essential party favor? Well, you know, those are the ones you have to have. Yeah. They're essential. So like, like my slippers and pajamas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it means different things to different people, I think. <laughs> and cotton candy. Yeah. Some people, and, it's cotton uh, candy. Some people, slippers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Universal Orlando's on-site hotels will also offer unique dining options, live entertainment, midnight toasts, balloon drops, and all to mark the new year. Highlights include Hard Rock's Hotel Rockin' 2018, 
and Jake's best of 2018 beer dinner at Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort. <laughs> Approved by Leatherface. <laughs> Does that not sound up your alley? A beer dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the food, bring the beer. That's it. A beer dinner. Yeah. <laughs> For think. starter, a beer. For main course, a beer. <laughs> a and flight. dessert is a beer. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh, oh my yes. God. Yeah. Chris, I assume... Have you ever been? This was this is something I would have expected you out of any of us to have experienced. As the party correspondent? Yes. <laughs> um, I've been out there for New Year's Eve. I've never done the Eve party. Right. So, like, we've done the parks, and um, we've hung out at City Walk and stuff like that. But, again, I don't know. We just never bothered to do that. But it's well, fun. If it starts at $109, and you get $30 off, for before December 15th, plus an extra discount, something for annual pass holder, which I'm guessing is probably equivalent to your pass. So I'm guessing like 15% off for a premier holder. I'm probably looking at something like 50, 60 bucks to go. It's not bad. It's not that. Yeah, that's not too bad if it's actually got like unlimited food, but what kind of food? That's what it is. Pretzels and cheese or something. <laughs> oh, I could eat that much or worth of pretzels and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, see... What it says is an unlimited selection of gourmet dishes. Does that mean, how is that possible? How can you have an unlimited selection? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, not unlimited yeah. supply. Unlimited no, supply. an unlimited selection. So, you could, so every so mouthful could literally, be a different no, one yeah, forever. But unlimited, <laughs> unlimited gourmet dishes, how is that possible? Well, <laughs> we better go and try it. <laughs> It's like, literally, if I get to the end of this and I've tried all the dishes, sir, I'm taking you to court. Because to see. quote a, an episode of The Simpsons, this will be the best court case ever since the one brought against the never-ending story. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, standing outside of this party when it's done is is awesome to watch. Right. It's, great. it's a great people watcher. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. So they just like kind of section off an area of City Walk and the rest is still just open for everybody? Uh, kind of. They So they block off, you know, where the water fountain kind of flows down um, in front of like the Universal Studios store there? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. So they, they block off a huge section of that and then they'll set up like a DJ and there's, and they wall it off too. So it's really hard to see inside. <laughs> and then they'll have, I think they have like cabanas or, you know, VIP areas that you can rent out. And, uh, and then they also, yeah, the, all the city walk areas up there are also included in that. So I, you can't go into, if I'm remembering correctly, you can't go up the, the clubs during New Year's unless you have that pass. Okay. Gotcha. Hmm. Yeah. If that's your type of thing, I suppose mm-hmm. it's not bad then in the end. It's not my cup of tea. Like Tracy said, <laughs> we're usually in bed by midnight now. <laughs> yeah. I fall asleep yeah. watching something on the TV and wake up at five past midnight and go, oh, can we go to bed year. now? Yeah, can we go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> the dog's already usually been gone oh by two God. hours. How so. old are we? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've never, never been one to go out for New Year's really. So such a big anti I used to when I was younger. Yeah, God, do we're it such a bunch of old fart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd like to think we're, well, my day. <laughs> we're older uh, and wiser. We're mature, I think the word is. Why speak for yourself? That's a dangerous word, mature. <laughs> yeah, fair <Never>. enough. <laughs> Indeed. Well, let's rejuvenate the show with a little ad from Mouse and Muggle. Have you taken a stroll down Diagon Alley and visited Gringotts Bank? Grabbed a butterbeer and the three broomsticks after a long day touring Hogwarts Castle? No? Then what are you waiting for? Let our team of experts help make your dream a reality. At Mouse and Muggle Travel Company, we specialize in all things Universal Orlando Resort and promise to do our very best to put together a vacation package that fits your needs, wants, and budget. At Universal, there truly is an option for everyone. Or if you're leaning a little more towards pixie dust rather than wands and potions, we specialize in Disney destinations as well. So, if you're ready to get started planning your next family vacation, let Mouse and Muggle Travel Company do all the hard work for you. You have nothing to lose, as our services are free to you. Just visit us at mouseandmuggle.com to fill out a no-obligation quote request, or send an email to info at mouseandmuggle.com. And remember, whether you're a mouse or a muggle, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company can help make your next vacation simply magical. Okay, and we're back. And, uh... Yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit about Halloween Horror Nights adding an extra night. 
Ooh. in the middle of everything. Wow. So. Okay, so due to popular demand, Universal Orlando Resort has added another night to Halloween Horror Nights 28. Tuesday, October 30th has now become another night for guests to experience the Upside Down or the Carnival Graveyard. This will, that, that's it though. Those are the only two houses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Staffing, sorry. Uh, this will make Halloween Horror Nights 28 the Halloween Horror Night event with the most nights ever. Uh, wasn't it already? <laughs> I think even more so. Now, does that make it 33 nights we're at now, I think? I think so. Darren, is this the first Tuesday night they've done? Um, I, I'm not willing to say the first ever because I think like when it was Fright Nights, like the second yeah. or third year, they did like a Monday through Friday thing for it. But it's not very often now that they, that they do Tuesday nights. Yeah, no, it's not a standard thing for sure. So I'm like, what Wednesdays, right? Yeah, I'm guessing, you know, uh, Halloween Eve, it works out for them. And it's got to. They- it's got to come to a point now because obviously like for us watching it from afar, this year has been crazy. I mean, we've oh, had yeah. people sending us pictures on Instagram of stuff stood outside waiting to get in and it's just a sea of humanity. Yeah. I would have used the word humanity. Year. Just crazy. Uh, it, it worries me for next year. Like Blumhouse is supposedly most people's least favorite house and they wait for that half an hour every, every night and everything else is... Wow. Now, you look back to 25 when Run was probably a lot of people's least favorite and that had no weight at all. No. That shows you how busy this year is. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, uh, what do you do? I don't know. I know. It's going to be very interesting because I think a lot of people, the people have been very vocal on the annual pass holder group, which they are normally anyway. Yeah. But you'd like to yeah. think that the same amount of people are going to guest services and complaining for how much they're paying per night. But do people actually do that? People like to be safe behind the keyboards. Uh, I That's, think a lot of people you know, still fill out those guest surveys yeah, on the way out so. and use mm-hmm. those. But, you know, Darren, obviously you are our Halloween Horror Nights expert. Where do they go? What is, what's the next step to try and alleviate those crowds? Because I think even if they brought Bill and Ted back or a, a similar show, I still don't think it would make that much of a dent. They, yeah, you're going to have to see the event expand in, in those kind of ways, though. They are going to need more shows. Um, you saw it at Hollow Scream this year, too. Hollow Scream, for some reason, cut their uh, number of houses down to six houses. I'm guessing. SeaWorld struggles uh, and that kind of thing are probably impacting them at this point. Um, But because of that, an event that's usually really dead on Thursdays and Sundays is kind of busy because there's only six houses. So the, the, the more selection you have, the more it goes. But then you run into another problem, and that is you have to come up with ideas for all these houses. You have to come up with IPs yeah. for all these houses. And with Warner Brothers uh, jumping into the, the yes. mix and doing their own event, they're not going to be so willing to lend out their their characters, perhaps maybe to, to Orlando once the dust settles and everything, but they want people to go to Hollywood and see their event there. Yeah. So you're not going to see Pennywise. You're not going to see, you know, a, a lot of the Warner Brother things that we thought might come here. So Universal is going to have to get really creative with the IPs that they choose um, and really expand on their original lineups. And I think going back to having icons and having icon events and having like street events in each scare zone and everything like that, really expanding the scare zones out is something that they're going to have to do. Which they have, I think, over the last few years. The scare zones have become, I think we said it when we were talking to Charles Gray, that the scare zones have definitely become places to hang out in more yeah. rather than yeah. just an area yeah rather than an area to walk through and get a few scares while you're going from house to house and then you're going to have to make guests aware and push the fact that it's not a one night event anymore yes yeah. it's a multiple yeah. night event you're not going to be able to do everything in one night comfortably yeah uh, because the event has expanded to this point where we have to you know facilitate so many people and you know, still make sure everybody's having a good time. Then you're going to need two nights to get through it. Yeah, and that's just going to be the way it is. Yeah. To be honest, I think that really two nights is a bit of a a push as well. You're still going to be racing around with two nights. It, it's mm-hmm. probably becoming a three night event easily, yeah. and to do it comfortably. Right. Well, we all know, you know that horror nights is one of those things that you need to do multiple times anyway. Really, oh, even when it was quiet yeah. and you were getting through, you know, one or two houses, one or, like once or twice through each house on a night anyway you still want to go and do it more and more because they've built those houses 
to really benefit going through multiple times yeah. anyway. But now it's getting to the point where you oh. people are struggling to get through all, all the houses in one night, let alone yeah. two. But it's also a, a good reason to go back is that your scare zones. You know, different days have diff- different atmospheres. Yeah. You know, your actors are coming in with different things have happened to them that are going to affect how they are on the day. So, yeah, you know, go in and enjoy it. Just you know, relax a bit, be able to... T- it's difficult though, isn't I know, it? I know, I know it's not available to yeah. everybody, but if you can, no, it's best to be able to take the time to just have a drink and just sit down for 15 minutes. People watch, chill out, get yourself centred again before you go back in because, you, I don't know, I burn myself out every time we do it because we just don't stop. Yeah. Yeah, I think the crowd kind of adds to that vibe of needing to rush through yeah. everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's that money thing. It's the same as anybody coming over to Orlando from the UK. It's bloody expensive. And you're like, yeah. we have paid a lot of money and I want to see everything. Yeah. And I think if, you, if you're only going to Horror Nights for one night, you've got to go in with that mindset of, do you know what? I'm not going to get to see everything. Make a plan yeah. of these are the four or five that I really want to see. And if I get to see them, then I'm happy. If I get anything beyond that, then brilliant. Yeah, it's a bonus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that saying like advertising it more as a two night event would set expectations up properly for people coming over, so that when you go in there that one night and you see everything is extremely packed and you can't do everything, you were kind of sold off on this being a two night event, not so much a one night event mm-hmm. because of that. Yeah, I wonder if <clears throat> see we didn't get the same tickets over here that we got the year we came. We usually get really good horror nights tickets, and the ticket the the sort of pre-released over here was a buy one night get a night free i wonder if that was testing the water oh, maybe. that maybe people from the uk the average guest isn't coming over and going to spend two three four five nights or like a month worth of nights at horror nights they might go out and do two nights so they're kind of looking at it that way if we do it effectively what's a two night ticket the uptake yeah. of sales on those tickets might have been more than well, Darren, me and you have talked about it quite a lot offline. We used to get basically the same frequent fear pass that you guys get for a fraction of the cost. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Like all the nights for next to nothing. I said that though, when you had an airfare, it's not next to nothing. No, but I mean, <laughs> comparing like for like, no, what I it know costs what you mean, yes. Someone living in America to get it, we were, we were getting it for like 200 quid. Yeah. And I guess they just assume that, I guess most people won't use all the nights. No. So. I'd love to be able to. Than- so yeah i don't know it's uh it's an interesting problem to have uh mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not it's not the worst for them i guess yeah. oh for them uh, no it's but it's ideal that's exactly what they want people clamoring to get in i mean if you think about all the money coming especially from rip tours and and every single additive you can do to halloween horror nights it is yep. a cash cow yeah without yeah. a doubt yeah um i do think that their operations needs to look over I don't know what is different between the California haunts and the ones here. It just felt like everything went a little smoother over there. <laughs> so uh, I don't know because the crowds were just as big, but it just didn't. It never felt as like hectic and crazy. Maybe it's just the humidity <laughs> that just drives everybody insane in, in Orlando. <laughs> Are you comparing uh, that to like Knott's Berry? Yeah, like Knott's Berry, Queen Mary. Um, you know, we did we did a few of them and the WB over there as well. And despite being like packed, like some of those uh, that we went to on the nights were very, very busy. Um, like everything just seemed to flow a lot better. Like everything just w- was a lot smoother. So I don't know exactly what it is and what, you know, what the difference is between here and there, but if it's the people, if it's, you know, the, the you know, the crowd and, you know, just how we're used to doing things here or what, but, I'll give him a plug. I know I've been listening to the theme park duo quite a lot, mm-hmm. and uh, and Gabe's been going to a lot of them. Not Scary Farm and Fright Fest, um, and the Warner Brothers thing. The Warner Brothers thing seems to be a little different because it seems to be sort of pulsed a little bit more. Not mazes as such. Darren's at like a couple of them are more yeah, sort like of experience. Yeah, most yeah. of them. But looking at like Fright Fest and and um, Not Scary Farm, they were kind of saying that. The parks seem to be bigger. There's a lot more space in that park. Do, do you think that helps? Like, because Universal that very well could. Yeah, yeah. it feels then, more spread out. Therefore, people are a bit calmer. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, that they keep it a little darker. The scare actors are actually out in the street scaring. Um, 
I, they, they don't really take pictures or anything like that. Maybe that's another thing that needs to, you know, go back to the way it was. But oh, now I'm just complaining like an old man. Yeah, I think that I think that comes from Universal <laughs> using IPs, though, isn't it? You can understand why people want to take pictures with them. You can you can understand it. I've I've done it myself. Well, yeah, but even in even in the original scare zones too, they I mean they make cool looking characters, but True. you know that's what people spend most of their time doing. So yeah, um, you can't win either way because if pe- if the if scare actors don't take pictures, everyone would be like, "Winged, no, I just wanted to take a picture," and they wouldn't. They were rude. Or, and it's, mm, how do you tell yeah. someone I don't want to, re- but remain in character? But from the yeah. other the other side of it, if I'm walking through a scare zone and I don't see anything, I don't see any scares or any actors because they're all posing for pictures. Yeah, I'm not going to be happy. I would think what, it, what what what's wrong with the old fashioned blurry selfie as they go past oh, you? Oh, I've got <laughs> Um, yeah, right. Reagan in tw- uh, yeah. uh, All Night Dying yeah. at 25 she she was really good because she would kind of drift past behind you pausing but not pausing yeah, but enough not for you to be able to get a picture and then off she went which is perfect yeah yeah. it also kind of pulls people out I feel because they're, they're supposed to be scaring you but if you're posing for a picture you're not scared of them no yeah yeah, it's so difficult. it's an illusion that's kind of the balance has gone there a little bit. And I think Universal have tried to a little bit with the with the entrance scare zone now. With that being a sort of mishmash of all the properties you've got in the park, that seems to be what they're trying to do in the production centrals to try and give people the opportunity to take pictures there in an area that's it's difficult to get scares in anywhere and try and discourage people elsewhere to do it, but it's not really that's working. Maybe they need to have extras of these characters as meet and greets somewhere else. Maybe. You know, for your mm-hmm. photo ops and stuff like that. I think that's where the uh, scare actor dining comes in a little bit. I think if they pushed mm-hmm. it that a little bit more, yeah, they could they could push, they could make that a bigger thing for people as well. Mm. Mm. Okay, let's uh, move on to a spew with Tracy. Yes, we shall. This one's from Joshua Ellers. He says, hey, Lee, Tracy, Darren, and Chris, I just wanted to send a spew for not just one person, but the entire team working at the ET Adventure last weekend. I brought my girlfriend Lucy to the parks for our usual Sunday trip, or so she thought. I dragged her over to ET for our first ride of the day, and as we got our interplanetary passports, a team member took a video of me where I proposed on our absolute favourite ride. Awesome. Aww. Oh, wow. Then, after she said yes... Luckily, yeah. <laughs> the team asked us if we would like to, uh, if we would like them to walk us directly onto the ride. So of course we said yes. After my fiance got over the shock and stopped crying, I hope that was good crying. I think so. Yeah, uh, we were walked to the second loading area where people were still clapping and congratulating us, and we were put in the front row of our uh, in our own private ride vehicle. As we were getting on, we were told to go to guest services for buttons, saying we were just engaged, and team members from both parks came up to us to congratulate us and ask how I did it. On our way out at the end of the day, we stopped into Spider-Man, and the team member that loaded us told us how happy she was and even watched the video we posted in the UOAP group. Hmm. <laughs> then while we were on the ride, she went and told the entire staff working on Spider-Man, and they ensured we had a great time on the ride. That's cool. Awesome. Uh, well, yeah. we did, and we had the best time at the parks either of us has, has ever had. We'd like to say uh, we'd like to thank the awesome team at Universal Orlando for making sure of that. We both love the show and look forward to the new episodes each week. Oh, congratulations! Oh, congrats, guys. Yeah, congrats. So yes, Joshua, and let us know your fiance's oh, yeah. name, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lucy, it did Lucy. All so right. It's my fault. Yes. So, congratulations, Joshua and Lucy. We're very happy. Awesome! Yay! Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Very, yeah. very cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So awesome. Now let's go on to a rumor mill with Alicia. Hi, this is Alicia Stella with news from the rumor mill. Today we're going to catch up on some various rumors for both of the parks. The biggest news may be, and stop me if you've heard this before, but Kid Zone is rumored to close after the holidays. This rumor comes to us from Andy, also known as Hate to Fly, who posted on Twitter recently that it's finally going to happen this time, less than 90 days, folks, with a gif of a construction vehicle. When I suggested maybe he meant the closure of Fear Factor Live, he told me that that was incorrect. Now the rumor mill seems to agree that Kid Zone will be going bye-bye. Again, what will replace it? Leading rumor is still Pokemon. 
Although some are also guessing that it could be a secret Life of Pets ride or even an entire land based on more Illumination properties, like Sing. Regardless of what, unlike the original Super Nintendo world plans, this kid's zone closure would likely leave the Animal Actor stage intact, as well as E.T. Adventure, of course, and only close down the other attractions, Barney, Curious George, and the Nuthouse Coaster, which unfortunately just received a new coat of paint last month. We'll see what happens in 90 days. Over in Islands of Adventure, now that the park, and our hearts, has a Sinbad-sized hole, everyone is left wondering what they'll be putting in its place. Probably nothing, actually. At least not for a little while. The Sinbad actors and stunt performers have been offered new jobs around the resort, including the upcoming Jason Bourne stunt show. The leading theory for a replacement for all of Lost Continent is still a land based on Legend of Zelda. But until the Potter Coaster opens, I can't see them closing any more attractions, even Poseidon, to make way for the new land. And I'm with Tracy that the Mystic Fountain must be saved and relocated to Port of Entry if Lost Continent is ever to close for good. It deserves to live on. While there have been delays rumored for the start of construction of the Jurassic Park coaster, I have heard they may begin testing the Raptor Encounter in its new location at the River Adventure Extended Queue. They will test at night to see if the new spot will work out or not before starting actual construction and moving the games to make way for the relocated experience. Also in Jurassic Park, I heard that they're now counting guests per exhibit inside the Discovery Center, as opposed to keeping a tally of all visitors total. This may signal the beginning of the end for some of the dated exhibits inside, such as You Bet Jurassic or the DNA sequence areas, which feel like they're stuck in the 90s. I think the nursery area is safe, but if you're a fan of any of the other exhibits in there, I'd check them out one last time this year while you still can, just in case. And speaking of Jurassic Park, there are still lots of Triceratops encounter props available at the prop shop, including the poop scoop shovel for just $300. (laughs) Not sure why that one hasn't been sold yet. That's all for now. Be sure to check out the Rumor Mill articles at uuopodcast.com. See you next time. I wish they'd just come out and say what the hell's happening with Kids Zone. Because it was this time last year that everyone was talking about it going. And yet still there. It wasn't that long ago yeah. we heard Barney was closing. Still going. Yep. Yeah. Well, didn't they even, well, from what we heard, they even told like team members at Barney that yeah. they were about to get, you know, they were going to be done in a couple of shows. And yeah. Yeah. That was almost a year ago. So, yeah. Well, something's happened behind closed doors then. I think it's the whole Nintendo thing, trying to figure out what they want to do and how they want to do it. Yeah. yeah. Because we still haven't really heard anything as far as... Is it Japan that's getting it first? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. So they haven't they really... broke ground already a while back. They haven't announced anything of what's going in there yet, have they really? Oh, uh, didn't they say Super Mario Land? Is that it? Um, I don't know for sure. Still saying due 2020, but not a lot of information on it. Super it's Nintendo kind of crazy World. it's been going on a year now and they haven't said anything. Mm. It's due to open 2020 in Universal Japan, but no details. Mario of- Kart. They announced, They officially announced Mario Kart. Okay. So uh, it will be part of Super Nintendo World. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah. And then they actually had Mario on stage. That was awesome. With a very Mario looking <laughs> Oh, that was background. cool, yeah. Just typical Universal not really letting anything out of the bag at all about anything. Yeah. To say one of his slides say five hundred and fifty million dollars. Wow. Yeah. So I'm not Pokemon even... would be an obvious get that would be I mean, like you said, we can tie it in. Like we talked about this when it was rumors a yeah. long time ago. They can tie it in with the Pokemon Go thing and maybe revitalize that a little bit yeah. and, you know, enhance that for the parks. Um, and then, you know, just having attractions based on that and just the, the continuing like gamification and playability of things in that area, I think would bring a lot of people back, not necessarily just kids. I don't think you I think you'd see it shift out of being like a kid zone yes. per se, uh, if that was the case. So. It's a weird thing, isn't it, when you look at how theme parks still, for all theme parks are inherently for families, as that's the whole point, really, that they still have designated kids' areas rather than yeah. everywhere being for everyone. True. It's still kind of weird in 2018 yeah. to have those 
areas that if you've got kids, you have to go over here. Everyone else, we're over here. I mean, that's the way I prefer it. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but sometimes when you've got kids, you want to do that as well because it's you know you're in a safe area. True. Yeah, that the basically the, it's a dead end. So they've got to come out past you to escape. Yeah, fair enough. And yeah, it means you so can chill out a bit around. more. Because I know what it's like having a little one and mm. pushing your way through the crowds, and all it takes is one person to push yeah, makes sense. the wrong place, and that kid slipped out your hand. So yeah. I understand that. Mm. You know. So yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, a lot of, lot of uh, interesting things on the horizon. Fingers crossed. Yeah, indeed. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for this show. So for Lee. Tracy and Chris, I am Darren, and this has been the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. Cut, print, that's a wrap for another episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. Never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review while you're there. Not an Apple user? You can listen on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, or your podcatcher of choice. Email us any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. Keep up with the latest news, rumors, and updates on our blog at uuopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.